know what language he's speaking. <laughs> well, that, that accent was South African, clearly. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> uh, um, should we take questions from the audience? Yeah, they look like a sensible... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this guy over here, then. Okay. Um, I've read the Kick-Ass comics, and they're really yeah. good. I enjoyed them. Um, I feel a buck coming in. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the character of Red Mist, what I gathered from it, he's kind of like a bigger, a little more bulky, not a lot of muscle and whatnot, yeah. but he seems a little more mature yeah. than Dave's character, and he's got facial hair and all that. Yeah. Um, now, McLovin, uh, Christopher Mintz Plessé, he doesn't really have that type of role. I know you were saying that you wanted to make sure that the comics and the film were exactly alike. Yeah. I mean... What was your thought process on picking him for that role? And he's got the more of a like, you know, uh, role model type look yeah. for Dave because he's oh, a lot yeah, he's, he's actually quite bad, Master. You'll be quite surprised because I, I was talking. No, see this. Uh, <laughs> I, I was talking to Christopher about this a couple of weeks ago. I think I said earlier he's coming to Scotland this week and we're going out on Tuesday. And like, he's really excited about the fact this is quite different from anything he's done. Like, he's actually a, a little fucker in this, and he's quite scary and he does some horrible stuff. And it's great because people go in with those pre perceptions of him not being dangerous and you see him doing some nasty stuff and he's got a great moment at the ending. Um, so but originally I was saying this to the guys tonight, the original casting I wanted was Zach Efron. But my theory was because Kick Ass obviously kicks the absolute shit out of him at the end of the movie and genuinely we, we phoned Zach Efron's people and everything and he was the only actor out of anyone we approached to turn us down. Everyone else jumped on all the roles because it's good roles, but he turned it down. But my theory was that anybody is going to pay ten bucks to see Zach Efron get the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> You know what? At, were the majority of you at the panel this afternoon with Mark? Yeah. At least half of you, I guess. You know what? Something that you brought up that I want to follow up on was yeah. talking about getting your start in comics. Yeah. The first time I think I noticed your work was Superman Adventure. Yeah. But what did you do before that? Uh, to kind of get your start in comedy. Oh, man. I mean, I, I mean I, writing I, Superman is interesting. still writing Superman. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, the special love of Superman, though, really. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> like, if you guys haven't read his Superman Adventures, it could yeah. be like a regular continuity Superman. Yeah, 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 you know, but really was, but it really, I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, pay and all that, it was the bottom of the scale, you know, but I've been around for 10 years, I mean, I've been doing stuff um, in the British scene, and small press and things, I started at university and I dropped out of university because I wasn't clever enough, and uh, I dropped out in my second year, but I've been, I've been doing this really, I mean, I submitted Red Sun, you know, the Superman book I did Red Sun, I submitted that. <laughs> I submitted that um, when I was 13 to DC, you know, so I've been thinking about it for a long time. I came up with the idea when I was about 7 and then submitted it at 13. So it'd been, as a career, it'd always been in there, but I just thought, how could you possibly live on the west coast of this fucking wet rock called Scotland, you know, and work in the States? But then luckily the internet came along and it all worked out right. This guy right here has a question. Uh, a little compliment to bear me out. Uh, in the industry, a lot of pickle fans, yeah. and a lot of, uh, especially creator own materials where you know, an original creator, a writer, and an artist take on a new IP, do a kick ass job with it, and then they leave the property. A lot of people typically tend to go away from it, they don't stay with the, the new team. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Hitch and Ellis were amazing on the authority. You did a fantastic job following up on that. What? <laughs> What was daunting about following up Ellis and Pitch, especially with quietly on the team, and what led Ellis to, to pick you for the job? Because he mentioned that you would have no uh, nobody else to pick. Um, size. <laughs> <laughs> well, he actually uh, he invited me down to see the hotel room one night, and he said he took his, his sweater on, he took his sweater off, and he just stood there, and he was I don't know, he was like maybe 34 or something, at the time, and he said. Is this the fucking body of a 33 year old man? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? And he says, uh, Do you want to touch it? <laughs> and I said, No, I don't want to touch it. You know? And I was kind of embarrassed. And I, I remember just sort of looking away. And he says, Don't be such a fucking girl. Touch me. <laughs> Do you want to write the authority? <laughs> fucking touch me. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, months later I got the contract, you know, and I was writing the authority and it was again in my career, you know. I still, no matter, see, no matter how many showers you have and all that, you can't fucking wash away shame. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, so thanks, Walter. Yeah. <laughs> this guy over here is pointing at himself. Like, he's going to make me. I'm not even calling on you. I want to point at the fact you're pointing at yourself. I'm going over yeah. here. I'm going over here. Oh. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. All right. We all like movies. I know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where the fuck, and why the fuck is it taking so long for kick at 7 and 8? Oh, we know? Uh, that's very simple. Don't know me, a junior? This guy can paycheck on me? <laughs> oh! oh. No, the way it works is you actually don't get paid until six months after the comic comes out when you do create your own. So I wrote the script a year ago, but Johnny's been really busy doing the animated stuff. And the amazing Spider-Man. Oh, fuck that. You know, but like, <laughs> but uh, halfway through the movie, there is an animated sequence, kind of like Kill Bill, you know, where it goes animated. And um, there's this computer. They told Johnny they had this computer program that could turn his artwork into 3D animation, and he just has to do a few drawings, and they make it come to life magically. With, with elves or something like that. And Johnny was like, oh, I'll, I'll do that, you know. And then they said, you know we said you only have to do a few drawings, you actually have to do 1,400 drawings. <laughs> and it's actually called animation. And they worked in the way, they, worked in the way they, they used to work, you know, Filipinos in the 60s, the animation and all that. It was terrible, you know. And poor Johnny, um, he, he, uh, he, his schedule just got fucked, you know. And his priority has to be with Spider-Man, because that's his day job in Marvel don't take any money from Kick-Ass, we get all the dough from Kick-Ass, which is great, so uh, his contract stipulates he has to do a certain amount of Spider-Man to just kick-ass suffer. It won't happen again because the anime, Johnny's a super fast artist, but the animated stuff will only be in the first movie, it won't be in the second movie. Yeah. So it won't be late. But it is good. It's, it's finished though, I mean, I think it's out in about two weeks, and then the next one will be too bad. <laughs> you know what, that brings up an interesting question, Mark. With writing for your own stuff now, yeah. are you also writing for movies and or TV? No way, no, that's not true. Honestly, I really, I would never do it, because the idea of writing a script and then someone coming in and saying, oh, write it 32 more times, it's like, fuck off, you know? The nice thing about comics is that it's so autonomous, you can just sit and you do it, and it either stands or falls based on you. There isn't producers and accountants and all these people saying that's too expensive. But, I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, in the Kick-Ass movie, they have a sequence where Dave's in hospital at the end of issue two, where he's been beaten up and stabbed and everything, and he's worried about being reincarnated if he dies as either a Chinese person or a spider. That's the two big fears. And he's worried about the spider thing because he'll have to have sex with other spiders and stuff, and all these fears are going through his head. And we, we had that in the movie. and. I can tell you exactly, to 15 seconds of a CGI spider, it's weird when you're producing stuff, you have to know these figures, but 15 seconds of a CGI spider costs us $185,000, right? So we're like, is it that funny that he's worried about fucking spiders that we pay $185,000? And, and we cut it out the, the film, it's only seconds, you know? And uh, in the comedy, you don't have to think about that. It costs as much to have two people talking as to have the White House exploding and all that, so that's what I love about comics. And no matter what movies is collaborative in comics, there's only you and your artist who usually you can trust if it's somebody you've worked with before. So I love that, it's great, you know, and I love creating franchises and producing them and having the J.K. Rowling relationship with the thing and just guiding the movie, you know, and letting other people do the hard work. I hate to just do that. Yeah.